started. All right, Shabbat Shalom, good morning. Once again, we are getting into this gospel accounts of Yahusha Mashiach. And today is going to be a special account. It was always something that I enjoyed looking at as, as I was coming up in my beliefs. And I'm really looking forward to see what comes out in this today. We're going to be looking at the Amuna of that centurion, and his faith, and how that moved Yahusha and stirred him. So, Brother JP, if you will, Hallelujah. take us away in Matthew 8, verse 5 through 13, and then let us know what you see. Hallelujah. This is Matthew chapter 8, starting at verse 5, and it says, And when Yahusha was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, and saying, Master, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Yahushua said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Master, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Yahushua heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, so not in Israel. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Yahushua said unto the Satyrion, Go thy way, and as thou but hast believed, so be it done unto, unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. Hallelujah. Wow. What, you, what do you see there, brother? There's a lot in this one. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. And, and it's, it's amazing. And I'm just because I'm looking at this word just because I'm doing some study. Um, and this word, uh, which I'll bring out because I'm, I'm doing this study, I'm gonna bring it out today. Um, and it's the word he speaks in um, verse 13. He says, as thou hast believed, and it's this word pissed you, pissed you. And it's, and they use it as believe in the, in the King James, um, in the Greek, it's to have faith or by credit to entrust. Um, and so it's amazing because when you look at the Hebrew word, um, and you and you kind of you can correlate it to a word in Hebrew, which is believe is to stand firm as a support. And all it was was that it says, and Yahushua said unto him, unto the satyrion, go thy way. And as thou hast believed, so be it done unto you. And I just find it so amazing that word. It's just it's just been just really magnified in my mind of how we just have to. This is the entrust. Our support has to be standed on that faith and that belief and um and is and is of course we see that there's a healing that was done well, hallelujah hallelujah there's a beautiful account i'm going to bring that back up because i want us to really take a look at this real close you know there's something here that that is is almost more astounding it was because Let's see what it says. It says, and when Yahushua was entered, comparing them, uh, there came unto him a centurion and, and beseeching him. So he had heard about him. We're going to see this more clearly when we go into the Luke account uh, of how this story is told. But, you know, it, they, 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 they sent and, 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 and contacted him because of what they heard and they believed, right? But they, they didn't find themselves worthy. Now, think about what he said to, the, to, to Yahushua, that he, he wasn't worthy to even enter into his, under his house, to come under his roof, right? So he, he recognized the authority of Yahushua, right? He, he, he seen something that was unique because it was some, a trait that he was familiar with, that authority that he came in, that, that authority that, 
that he was speaking in, you know, he came in the authority or the name of, of Yahuwah. He came in that authority. That's what the name means when, when, when we see that word come in where he was, he came in his father's name, the name of Yahuwah. That's the that authority that was given to him. It was placed upon him, just like it was Yahuwah speaking. You know, when you have an ambassador, he's speaking for that kingdom. You know, he's representing. So in the sense that that centurion recognized it and that, and when that was what caught Yahushua's attention, because he didn't he didn't want him to come. He didn't even, he didn't believe he even needed to go and touch it, that this, this person. That it, all he needed to do was speak it, because he recognized the authority in which he was operating in. And I just found that that was really really amazing. As I was, uh, and those that are in military can understand this mindset as well. You know, because there's a certain authority that, you know, when you hear it, people react. They come, they go, they do. You know, and this is the same thing that this, this centurion is recognized here. And that is what I think caught Yahushua's attention because he, he recognized who he was and the authority that he had came in. And that he had the amuna, the, the faith to believe that he, all he had to do was, is the, the say it. You know, where did that kind of thinking come from? That's that's something that was put upon him by from what he heard, and you know, and, and it, it, there had to have been a stirring within him to, to believe this deeply that Yahushua said that you know that it was going to be done. But then he goes on, and this is the other part that got me because I wanted to look into this because it confused me a bit. Was in eight verse eleven and, and twelve. This is this is that area that where he where he's talking about uh, um, those that are going to be found with such great amuna that you know they're going to be they're going to be coming from the the east and the west they're going to be sitting down with with these great forefathers Abraham Isaac and Jacob in, in, in the kingdom it says and then it goes on and this is the part that caught my attention is but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth now i, th I think what i'd like to do here is come to you brother rod and 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 get your take on what this is and then i'm going to come and, and, and reveal some of the the scriptural evidence that i see for this and of course you know the studies that i've done in, on the weeping and gnashing of teeth and 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 how people are are, are going to be um, terminated, if you will, you know, we've had these discussions, and I believe there's this going to be centered a lot around this topic right here this morning. So, if, if you would, brother Rod, um, want to see what it is that you see here, and then I'm going to come back and and uh, I'll fill in gaps where I can. Oh yeah, Shabbat shalom, brother. Shabbat shalom, brother. Um... Well, I, I see quite a few things here, um, and I, I wanted to speak to some things that, that weren't mentioned, and then I'll deal with that. Is that all right? Um, so part of part of what's what's uh, amazing about this is, like you said, you know, you know how Yahushua marveled at this centurion, and you know that word "marveled" is the word uh, "thauma." In, in the Hebrew, and it means emotional astonishment. Like he was visibly moved and astonished by the faith of this man. So one of the things that you asked was, well, how, where did this faith come from? Like how, how did this man have it, right? Um, so you started talking about the authority that he understood, being in the military, he understood hierarchy, he understood the word, you know, you, we can go back to, to, to Psalms to see how the, the word heals, right? Um, uh, Psalms 107 verse 20, I'm not gonna go to it right now, but. So it made me, you know, it made me wanna look at, okay, why was the centurion there? What was going on around him, right? So this place Capernaum, I found out was the largest 
of 17 fishing villages, right? So it was a province. Rome was in control of this area, Capernaum. So they set, and it was also a tax office there. So the, the centurions would be in the tax office, making sure everything went according to the way Rome had set out for it to be. You know, but it was it was it was a, a Hebrew community. Um, so the centurion away from Rome, the center of Rome would have been seeing the Hebrew customs. He would have been hearing the stories about Messiah. He may have even witnessed some things um, that the Messiah was doing, which would lend to his understanding of the operation of Messiah during this time and believing that he was the one that had the authority to make these things happen. So I thought, you know, and just looking into the culture, you know, he would understand that. And then we're gonna also, because in, in Luke's passage there, there seems to be a, a seemingly uh, confliction in that it was the servant versus him, but just like, you know, Yahuwah, Yahushua, to send the servant, to send the messenger was just like, it was the same thing, the word of that person, the word of that the, the, the messenger, the word would be carried out and wouldn't be any different than the messenger himself, uh, than the, the one who sent him himself. Um, in, in regards to uh, verse, um, verses 11 uh, and 12, and I say to you, many will come from the east and the west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness, there where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Um, and, you know, when I when I look at this, I, I see clearly that these are sons of the kingdom, sons that are are bloodline Hebrews that had the promises passed down through them from their father Abraham, their father Isaac, um, their father Jacob, but have lost the complete understanding of Torah, what it means. Uh, these are the ones that are always called to to turn back to Torah. John's, um, you know, immersion was turn back to Torah, turn back to the straight and right way. You know, Yahuwah always reminding, turn back, turn back to Torah, turn back to the straight and right way. So this idea of those that had the promise given to them, understood what the promise was from their forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, would lose the inheritance that they had um, by way of not believing. Um, and, and, and there would be much uh, turmoil in terms of their sorrow, um, their regret. Um, and this is where we get the weeping and the gnashing of teeth. So um, that's my take on that. Um, I'll turn it back over to you, brother. Oh well, yeah, yeah. There's there. That's really interesting uh, when we really start to think about what that's declaring, and and you know that the take that you have on that as far as you know the bloodline. Uh, you know, I want to take a look at First Samuel two nine. He says he guards the steps of his faithful ones, but the wicked perish in darkness. For by his own strength uh, shall no man prevail. Again, in Psalms 112, verse 10, it says, The wicked man will see and be grieved. He will gnash his teeth and waste away. The desires of the wicked will perish. Again, in Isaiah 65, 14, it says, My servants will shout for joy with a glad heart, but you will cry out with a heavy heart and wail with a broken ruach. See, we're, we're talking about these are the ones that he's referring to are, you know, the wicked, you know, that are found within uh, this, th these sons of the kingdom, you know, uh, and that, you know, could that be the bloodline uh, that he's referring to uh, possibly? Uh, 
because it's going to be those that are going to be, um, you know, they're, they're, they're entering. And according to this, when we see this, uh, let me get back over here to read that part of scripture where it says that, but the sons of the kingdom, you know, it's calling them sons of the kingdom. But these, these are the, the evil ones. These are the ones that are unrepentant. You know, they, so this is kind of a, a puzzling scenario for us because if it calls uh, these the sons of kingdom, but we know that these are the ones that, uh, according to the Tanakh that is referencing here, you know, these are evildoers. So how can they be considered the sons of the kingdom? Are these that, you know, have fallen away that are, you know, that have, you know, that have not repented and truly turned their hearts over. They have a form of it. Um, you know, that, that just sparks a whole nother thought about this to me because, you know, he, Yahushua kind of disregards that because then it goes in, then it says that Yahushua said under the centurion, go, as you have believed, so will it be done to you. And he really doesn't count into this too much more. So we have to kind of look at, what is this kind of referencing? Because there, there's a check here that I'm getting about this, and it caught my attention when I was reading this and, and looking for some deeper revelation on this. And so we have a couple of different viewpoints on what it could be. So, Brother Paul, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, brother. Yeah, um, I think I've got some notes here on um, in relation to my uh, vision of Scripture. But uh, I, I wanted to go back to um, uh, verse 8 after that. But um, when referring to chapter 11, I've got a footnote which says, the prophesied return of the scattered Israelite nations as seen in Matthew 15, 24. So it's suggesting that chapter 11 is, is referring to the scattered Israelite nations. And then um, chapter 12 it suggests in the children of Judah in Judea. Um, so that, that's what the footnote says here that that could possibly be referenced into. Um, but I, I just wanted to go back to, um, you know, where this ties in. You know, I see this tying into Matthew 7 as well. Um, you know, the, the Amuna side of things, really. Um, this was a man that knew that Yahushua didn't even need to enter his home. He could, you know, go to him and ask him to say the word and for them to be healed. And um, Yahushua says, um, truly I say to you, in, in chapter 10, uh, verse 10, truly I say to you, I have not found so great a moon and no, not in Israel. And um, I think it applies to us now, you know, it, when we go to the Father, we... We, we go to the Father in the same way this man would come to Yahushua. Um, you know, we, sh we should pray and have that same level of amuna where, you know, we know that if he says it is done, it is done. And if he says our prayers are answered, they're answered. And um, he's, you know, this man is not a perfect man, as he's pointing out. And, you know, this this uh, evid or, or um, slave or whatever the term is, he, he was healed, you know, he was, he was healed just at, just at his word. So I, I see it tying into to Matthew 7 um, a lot in relation to the message, what it's giving us. It's, it's the man took action to go out of his home to seek Yahushua because he knew if he went and took action to go to him, then, you know, there, there would be healing. And I think um, it's telling us that we must go to Father, we must pray to Father, and we let take take that action and, and not just sit by with things in life. You know, personally, myself, things going on right now, as all of us probably have. And I just go directly to Father straight away, you know, go to Yahuwah, speak to him, ask, ask him. And just have an undoubted Amuna that this is this will come to pass unless it's something else he wants me to experience or go through. But um Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Um, I just see it, it, it's it's a powerful message that he had expectation, even though he was a sinner in his words. You know, he he'd done wrong by way of authority with um, the centurion position he was in. 
isn't it you know there's another perspective that i just seen here as i'm reading this and this is a this is a, this is a uh like a, a, a futuristic uh the, the millennial type of rain type of situation where i'm seeing here where it says that I, and if we look at the whole of scripture where he's going to be calling us from the east and the west he's going to be drawing us together for this banquet that he's going to be throwing this wedding banquet you know and start to talk about this this feast and stuff that the, the banquet that we're going to be seeing that's the only way i can see you know that that we're going to be uh, that these folks were were in this position of being in uh, you know uh, in the position of the uh, of going to this banquet to be part of this feast that's going to be just going to be held, and then I see that, that that's where it's talking about the, with the King, uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. You know, with the with the forefathers in the kingdom of the Shemaya, which we know that's got to be you know, a futuristic type of a, an event that he's talking about. But then we see the sons of the kingdom, which are those that are going to be coming in again and being judged that are not going to be able to make it into the kingdom. And therefore they're going to be, uh, they're going to be weeping and gnashing. They think they did everything right and, and they've been fooled. And, you know, they have sat, you know, just like we hear was written in the, of, of the book of Noah, you know, what they, how it was when they realized that they were about to be, dying you know they were going to perish same thing here that second death i think is what we're what we're seeing here outlined for us and and it's interesting how he how he correlates that into this into this message hallelujah uh brother rod and then i'll come to you the silver family yeah yeah absolutely you hit it on on the nail so <clears throat> when it says in verse 11 and i say to you that many will come from the east in the West and sit down with Abraham. This is speaking of nations, other nations outside Israel, Judah, right? But then it 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 and it gives them the father of the fathers of those that will be sons of the kingdom who the promises were given to. That's why all throughout scripture you see promises that I gave your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yahushi even tells you know them you're you're not of your father abraham because if you were you would believe me you're you're of your father which is talking about the evil ones who were bloodline but they were evil they weren't following the teachings of their fathers abraham isaac and jacob so then the sons would be their immediate sons that the promise was given to you know to to your seed but those that ignored, those that disobeyed, those that rebelled against Yah, even though they see the nation, the other nations come in, they themselves would not be in because of disobedience. Those would be the ones um, gnashing of teeth. And, and you touched on it, Isaiah, you know, the whole idea of sitting down is rest, reclining, which is the same word as feast that we see in Isaiah. And in Revelation, but you just hit on that, so you you're already there. Praise you. Oh yeah, that's good. We get confirmation about things that we're seeing. So, you know, praise you all. So, family, Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. I just want to put a not a different perspective, a the application perspective there um, of what we're talking about when we talk about this level of Amuna, um, not only in looking at it as only something that our Messiah um, to do, but striving to bring our lives into alignment so that we are walking out the fullness of our authority, if that makes sense. Um, one of the biggest um, problems I foresee with the body as a whole is really understanding the authority of Yahuwah in the earth realm as his children. Now that connects back with when Yahusha said, if you ask anything in my name, right? But we have to first get a clear understanding of knowing how to ask in his name, because he then balances that with James, where he says, listen, you can't just be heaping up prayers built up on your lust because I'm not doing it. And if you're in your sin, you know, I'm not doing it. So there is a purity in our life um, where we stand, where we begin to operate just like Yahusha. 
where the words we speak and the life we live is so full of fire. Um, not that we are trying to usurp a position that is not already given to us. That was the problem with what made Eve fall. Um, we are created and ordained to walk in the image of our father, which is all Yahusha did. He walked like his father. So he's now restoring our mind to that understanding and building our character in that understanding where we won't ask amiss. But we have to understand that the way he sent the word, we can send the word. It's, it's, it's amazing to be able to know that, yes, I can be the recipient of a word being sent to me, but the greater authority comes when we understand I can also send a word, which is what happens when we pray. Hallelujah. <laughs> we beseech Father, we begin to send up the words to the throne and Father is uh, gracious and he hears us. But then there's another level that we have to understand that we can walk in as we are walking out in obedience of doing what Yahusha did, sending the word. And I can't say that I've always seen the manifestations, but in many times I've seen manifestations, at least two, of where I sincerely sent the word. I sincerely, you know, prayed and sent the word and saw miraculous results. And so that lets me know that it's definitely possible. And it's definitely something that as a collective, we need to work towards and not just, and I'm not saying we're doing that, but sometimes we get in awe at what Yahusha did and not seeing that we are the same. We are sons and daughters of the Most High and he will work his exploits and he will do miraculous things through us as we walk in that obedience. But understanding that is the, is the, is the, is the, is the key. Um, and I think that Second Peter really, um, Second Peter chapter one, verse 10 addresses that along with Galatians and five. And I know it sounds like I'm talking in riddles because I'm trying to say it quickly, but there's a, there's a lot of um, information here that we got to dig into as far as the application of it in our lives, not just in the receiving end, but in the application of walking out like Yahusha end, um, that father's authority may be utilized through us because he's still the same Elohim. Um, and so starting with yourself is always where I recommend, right? Because Galatians 5 talks about bringing under authority your body, right? Because Galatians chapter 5 talks about the will of the flesh versus the, the will of the spirit, right? And that's, that's beyond ourselves, but it also first starts with myself. If I'm not grounded in disciplining my body, walking out the fruits of the Ruach, then the principalities that we are supposed to address per Ephesians, right? In Ephesians, we're, we're supposed to be addressing principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, uh, evil that works in high places, all those things, you know, they're not going to respect or obey you, which is what it was talking about when Yahushua cast out the devils because the disciples couldn't do it. So it starts with that bodily delegation of authority. No, I'm in control. No, you're not going to do this. You're not going to lie. You're not going to lust. You're not going to walk on out, outside of the discipline of Yahuwah. No, no, no. Bringing my body under subjection and then walking out fully Torah and then, you know, moving into the level of understanding now because I am in the esteem of Yah, I have made my election sure, because that's what Second Peter talks about. I don't want to confuse you because it starts talking about the election, but that's a part of making my election sure. When we talk about election, y'all, we're talking about authority. We're talking about a position of delegated authority. Father has elected you, esteemed you, has put you in his body to be one of his children. And there's great riches and authority that is connected with that. So as I'm making my election sure, yes, I'm doing what Father says. No, I'm not going to walk in lust. No, I'm not going to ask for crazy stuff. No, you know, and I'm just being silly, but you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to be declaring, you know, I need a new house. You know, like, <laughs> that, ain't, that ain't where I'm at. I'm decreeing and declaring Father's will in the earth. His will shall be done. I'm only coming in agreement with what's going to be done anyway. So I'm not going to play the crazy game. Like, I don't know if it's going to be, nah, I know it's going to be done. So I'm, I'm walking in that spot. Then I can hear him as he's directing me of my words and my speaking, which is why it connects back with Yahushua saying, hey, every idle word, right? You're going to be judged for it because your words carry life and death. 
So he's just bringing us to that point of understanding all these aspects as we're living this out and what we need to be doing with our authority, if that makes sense. Makes perfect sense to me. I, I agree with you, sister. You know, we have to recognize where we sit. All of this is speaking to us. All of these things that we're learning as you were going through, you know, what you were saying, a lot of that was taking me back to what we've been studying and, and the things that have been leading us up to this point in time. You know, but I want to go back to um, this centurion again and, 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 and how he, he, you know, he wasn't, he, I don't think that he was a follower or a believer, if you will. Um, and I, this is the part that I you know, want us to pay attention to because, you know, this is the, somebody that was outside of, of the belief system, if you will, but he still had, according to Yahushua's words, he had greater faith then, then that's how then Yasharel, these are the people of Yahuwah. How is it that somebody that doesn't know the word, you know, you know, he doesn't walk this and live this lifestyle, had greater amuna, greater faith, if you will, than all than all of Yasharel. That's like a big slap in the face right there that, you know, that he marveled that much that he's like, Wow, I, I I've never seen anything like this, you know. In all of Yisrael, nobody believes like this, but yet this man did. And there's something that we we want to capture and get a hold of in this because I think that's going to propel us to seeing more clearly what does it take to to move the hand of Yahuwah, you know, uh, like Yahushua. You know, he all he he heard something astounding him. It was done, just like you know, Sister Ina said, you know. If you ask in, in his name, it's going to be done. So you're connected to him. You're connected to what he's done. We see what he's done, what he's teaching us. And we begin to, to have our moon grow because that's how it, you know, how it grows is by the hearing of the word. So as we continue to dig into this word and, be, and it begins to let light bulbs go off in our minds about how it's starting to connect and make sense we start to walk in greater Amuna and greater understanding of what this word is and what Yahushua is teaching us here so that we can walk just like that, that we can become a duplicate of how he operated and how he functioned and, and you know, what he was teaching and is vital for us here because I see this, you know, there's something that's very powerful here according to Yahushua's own words that he's seen something in this man that was greater than, than he's seen within those that are even believers. So if that's something we, we can, that we can take and, and grab and put into our understanding that we can believe that he can do anything. He didn't have to be coming to the guy's house. He didn't even want to go into the house because he was ashamed of who he, who he was, you know. But he believed enough that he said, I know, I know who you are. And you don't even got to come. Just say it. And it'll be done. He's using the words of scripture. Back at Yahushua, just like the Yahushua would do. You know what I'm saying? He, he's, he's using those words that are our power. Those are promises that, that we can hold on to. And we see it in action here. So that's one of the things that I wanted to point out from what I was seeing as we're looking at this, just this condensed part of scriptures. You know, we can really miss a lot if we're not really paying attention to, you know, the enthusiasm that we see Mashiach took about this. Because I want to get him excited. I want him to say those kind of things about me and my Amuna as well. You know, so Brother JP, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I was thinking that way. I, I was thinking that, like you had just expressed, even in our in our time of, you know, life today, there are people that um, are in that same position as the Centurion. You know, they're they're of the other nations. You know, until you come into the, na in the nation of Yashara, then you you are in this place, but they're in this other nations. And so then they come to you, you know, being this like person to say, like they looked at you and said, this man is a faith. He's had faith all these, you know, times and, and they seen you as you walk in faith. And then they, they know I can come to this man. Like I can come to this woman and, and know that I can, and they're going to, they're going to show me the way to go, you know, and so, and, and I looked at it in that way of like, wow, like, you know, the centurion, you know, he, him being of this, 
Roman government and everything just being of the other nations. And so I just thought that was powerful that even in, in our modern time, we, I'm looking in the same way. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Right, right. Exactly right. Brother Rod, I'm coming to you, Brother Paul. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, JP just, uh, he touched on the, the whole idea of these other nations. And remember, um, Yahuwah was always going to use other nations to provoke Israel, Judah to jealousy, right? So in regards to that, it's something interesting that, that Sister Ina was saying, because she was talking about walking, you know, in the promises, walking in your inheritance, you know, walking in the Amuna that would have you be able to do the things that Yah said we would be able to do, just like his son. Um, the problem is, is that we have this um, this uh, religious mindset, you know, and I'm not talking about us here, I'm talking about period, this mindset of religiosity, which is interesting because it's the same thing that, Yahushua, that we're reading right here, because he says that, that, that many would come from other nations um, and sit down with the fathers, but the sons of those fathers would not be allowed in. Again, showing how the difference between those that would believe and those who have the promise don't always follow the same thing. But we see this centurion, like you said, who is outside, who sees and believes, who hears and believes, who trusts the word of Yahuwah coming through his son and believes. But yet, all of those surrounding this same centurion in this same place did not. They were the main ones giving Yahushua the hard time. <laughs> He's saying, you know, I, you know, I, here's this man, this Roman centurion that, who has this faith that I haven't seen in all of this area, all of Israel, of the people that are supposed to have the promise, right? So when we look and we understand what the word is telling us, we don't create this new religion where we're walking around basically outside of the word and being magicians with the gifts that, that, that Yah meant for those that trust in him. We become followers of him. We do the things that he wants us to do. These aren't individual, you know, uh, conquests that were going on to go out. These are things that we're empowered to from him as we're obedient to him. He works through us, you know, but people are taking these same gifts that we read about and they're turning into a monetary, you know, opportunity. They're turning it into a business, you know, that is outside of Yah. And, and that's what we have to be careful of following, listening to. And that's the distinction between what, you know, all of you have been saying, specifically with what Sister Ina was saying about truly following and truly being a believer. A true believer is going to have that faith that believes that Yah is going to be faithful to what his word says without question, you know, not putting logic in it and not saying, well, how is he going to do that? Say, no, I've watched, I've witnessed, I've seen these things. If you just say the word, it'll be done. You don't even got to come to the crib, you know, just say it like this is what he was looking for from those who had the promise given to them. So um, I just wanted to throw that in because it kind of marries those ideas and separates the falsities that we see in this religious world that we're in, right? And, and the distortion of scripture that we have become accustomed to prior to understanding the full gospel um, from cover to cover. Praise you. <laughs> That's a good take on it, brother. I like how you put all of that. It makes so much sense when you start to look at it from those perspectives. It changes everything, it really does. You know, so I love as we hash through this, we start to see, as Sister Ina said, how do we see life, how we see this practical in our lives today? Well, this we can see that just from this guy's actions, that it was far superior, you know, to even those of Yasserel. So, you know, for us to be able to have this ability to learn, to understand what the scripture is saying, and to be able to continue to have our Amuna increased as we continue to walk this out and learn and start to understand how this can be in my life where you can see yourself doing it 
because it's take steps. You know, it's not, it's not all your effort. Of course, you have to be led. You have to be given, you know, and walking in the authority of the Ruach to do so. But it still requires you to take the steps. You have to make the efforts. You have to go forward. You have to open your mouth and be willing to be able to be used to be able to declare something that Yahuwah wants declared. You ain't got to say, thus say Yahuwah. You ain't got to say all that. You just got to declare something that, that you see and allow that 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 word to, to do what it does. Scripture tells us about the power and authority we have in our words. And it's because of the thoughts and the actions that we have attached to the words that matter. It's, the, it's what you feel. It's what you're passionate about. That's why when you're crying out to Yahuwah, as we see uh, given us in his examples multiple times, these people are burying their souls. They're, they're to the, the, the end of this, and they're crying out in desperation or fear or whatever you want to put a tag on it. We can see ourselves in that same role. But you know what? They trusted enough to say, this is why I'm crying out to you. I need you. I can't do this alone. You know, I know where my strength lies. I know where the wisdom comes from. I know where the answers are. And when you start to see the words that we're studying and they begin to come alive in, in your understanding, you can say, yes, okay, I see that now. You can believe it. And now once you believe it, it's increasing your amuna to a point where it becomes active in your life. That's what we see here. And he didn't even know it. He just heard about it. He may have experienced it, whatever it might have been, but he believed. He didn't need to be convinced, you know. That's what that's what he was walking in. Something that was that's what Amuna really is, you know. It's the it's the faith of some, you know, the substance. And don't, what, go ahead, brother Rob. You had your hand up. You're you're muted. There you Sorry go. about that. Just real quick, I know Paul's waiting to go, but I I just wanted to say something in regards to that because because you said something, you know, that we need to understand when it comes to. You know, because because it was also mentioned, someone mentioned that, you know, giving a word from Yah. You know, giving a word from Yah isn't just some, you know, star like it drops down from the sky into your head and then you give a word. That's not what it what it is. You know, we have the word of Yah that we read and we study and we pray and we have the ruach within us speaking that same word. When you see someone, when I <clears throat> look at a sister Marsha and I see her her attributes and I say something to her, it's in regards to what Yah has given me through his word that says, this person and her attributes and her character matches what this is. Why don't I say something to her that can encourage her to let her know she's on the right path? She doesn't know she's on the right path. She's just doing what she's doing because she's trying to please Yah. Just like this centurion, he didn't know he was doing anything more than just saying something, but Yahushua revealed to him his faith based upon what scripture says about the attributes of someone that believes and trusts in him. So a word from Yah matches the word. It's not something separate or different. I just want to throw that in because that, that gets distorted and that gets thrown out too. It has to match what the word is saying. It's not something separate or different. And we have to make sure we're able to discern that because we might think we're getting a word from someone that is not able to be matched in scripture. And it's not based on anything but someone's purposeful, you know, self-gratification or lifting oneself up. And, you know, that's dangerous. That's a dangerous place to be in because when Yah talks about false prophets, the distinguishing factors are very slim because they look and they sound like us, but the word is the, 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 the magnifying factor. Does the person, what the person says, come forth based upon what the word says it will? So um, a lot of tricky stuff goes on with some of these passages that we have to steer clear of. I just want to make that clear. Um, I think Paul's up though. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's a good point out. You know, we have to realize that Yahuwah has put laws into place laws of physics, the laws of gravity, all of those different laws. And it doesn't matter. They're going to do exactly what he's told them they're going to do. And his word is exactly the same way. 
It's structured that way. So therefore, if it's utilized in the proper way, guess what? It doesn't matter if you believe or if you don't believe, it's going to affect you the same way because you're sowing that principle, you're you're sowing that law or whatever, if you will, that you're going to reap from whatever it is you sow. You know, you don't have to necessarily believe that to be true. It's, it's going to happen. It's just like you breathe and you ain't got to think about it. It does it all by itself. You know, so this is how we got to start seeing the word. It's, 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 a, it's a weapon. That's what the scripture is called. It's a weapon. It's our sword. And this thing is packed with power if we understand how to activate that power, to allow our words to give it life. So when we speak it, we breathe it, guess what? That word comes alive and it will not fail. It'll do what it's called to do. It has no other choice. Who has said his word will never return to him void. So if we keep that in our minds and our poor thoughts, we can start walking in this power and authority that we see the centurion that doesn't even have a clue what, like you and I do but he's already walking in that principle and it's already affecting him. And Yahushua says, this is greater than I've seen anybody in Yasharel do. That's great. You, you believe him without even having to have a reason to believe. Just because you believe it's true. He's seen it, he heard it, somehow he knew. And Yahushua responded to that. Brother Paul. Shabbat shalom again, brother. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to go to um, chapter 13, but there's another, another couple of things in my mind as well um, on what you were just speaking on. And, um, you know, I, I agree with you 100%. Our words, um, our words affect things and also our thoughts and emotions um, that are attached to our words or our thinking, you know, definitely give them power, definitely cause and effect. And I believe that what Yahuwah has given us, and there's not a, you know, true full understanding of, on that authority that we have um, in relation to speaking life and speaking death, you know, blessing and cursing, just thinking something, as Yahuwah said, would be just as bad as committing adultery if you, if you looked at the other woman, the other man's wife, you know, um, so our thoughts as well um, definitely have an effect on our life. And that's why it's very important to have a good mindset. And obviously Torah is uh, our foundation, but also to be, to be right and to be good in the world, for example. Um, the reason I was touching on 13, and I wanted to touch on another thing that you mentioned, is that these people are desperately praying, et cetera. It was nice that this man really wanted to help, um, you know, his Evid. He really wanted to go get help to heal him. Um, and I think it's a very important ingredient for our prayer. You know, we, we spoke about Matthew 7, verse 7 last week, and I spoke to a, another brother of ours, and I was like, you know, not many people truly understand Matthew verse 7, verse 7, if they've had that easy coasting life you know things have been smooth and easy but if you've been on your knees you'll understand what it means to ask and it is given when you receive but if we coast through life very steadily and we're not challenged as much as the next person then you don't really see the power of the father giving you those things in life you just take them as part of life that's just happened oh this just happened that just happened i just got a job i just got money i just met a partner you don't see these things because you're in a steady plateau but when you're up and down facing these big mountains and you're hitting these valleys you understand when father is coming to your rescue and you're really praying to him from those positions when you're at the bottom and you're praying to Father saying, please help me and please give me this, you know, then you see his power really manifest in your life. So for me, I'm looking at 13 and the most important thing that we sort of haven't touched on, Yahushua said to him, go your way. So he basically said to him, forget about it. It's done. Just go. And that's a very important ingredient when we pray. You know, we must pray and our amuna 
must no longer be attached emotionally to what it is we're praying for. We must let go because letting go is believing. So me personally, I, I don't know whether it's my understanding of the word faith, but I see the word faith as expecting something over a long period of time, like having faith that something's going to happen. That, that might be my misinterpretation, but that's the way I see faith. But the way I see believe or belief is I truly believe in that or I truly have a belief in that, then there is no doubt. There's, it has to come to pass. There is no doubt. So if I pray, I have belief and I let go. And, you know, just these last two days, yesterday, Yahuwah answered the prayer, which was a miracle for me. And he does it every other week, you know, big, big things that my life looks like it's going to go downhill and turn into disaster. And then he'll come to the rescue and a couple of miracles will happen in the same day. And it'll be like, wow, praise Yahuwah. Thank you, Yahuwah. But it's my, it's my, um, Ability to let go, I think, is the best way I can receive because um, what I do personally, I pray, I see it already done and I pray to the Father. And of course, I have a little bit of fear and doubt trickling in throughout the day if I see things. But as I said to a brother recently, for example, I could pray for, you know, somebody to be healed. But then I see them that same day and they're looking worse. And I see a doctor and he says, they're not doing good. And then I see another doctor who's a specialist and he says, it doesn't look good. I have to ignore everything they say. And I have to say, I don't, I, don't, I reject everything you say to me. I say it to myself, but I have to reject everything they say. And I have to pray to Father and say, please, Yahuwah, let them be healed. And they will be healed. And I've seen that done in my life. You know, that is true Amuna, when the world looks like it's still going wrong and it's still not going to happen, but it will happen because we believe, you know, we truly believe. And um, I went through that yesterday, just yesterday. And it was a, it was a thing that could change my life dramatically. And um, praise Yahuwah. He's kept me where I am. Uh, you know, I give him thanks and praise and I love him, you know, so Shabbat Shalom. Everyone. Yeah. Faith is that substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You know, you're seeing it, and that's the key. You're seeing it in the finished work. So you're already believing it is done, you know, and that's that's what Amuna is. You know, you're believing something that's completed already. It's a finished work. That's what scripture says. We were healed, right? We are healed. You know, it's all it's a it's a it's a finished work, you know. Is there a process that sometimes we got to go to get to that? Well, certainly. You know, Yahuwah, however he chooses, it doesn't matter. There's always a lesson in, to learn something in here, you know. Yeah, Even yeah. if he drops a, an answer like he does for you, it's, you know, there's something that you learn from that experience, you know. You know, that's can, how he does just, things with us. Can I just add something as well, brother? Um, in my experience with, like, huge, miraculous things happening in my life, I learned that the process was none of my business. It was not my concern. Like you said earlier on, you know, it, this is to Yahuwah. It's, not, it's nothing to do with me. So I pray. I, I, I visualize the outcome of the prayer. And I feel emotionally what I would feel like relieved with the outcome of the prayer. And then I ask it in Yahushua's name. I say amen and I let go. And then I try to get on with something that is completely not not in that mindset of for the whole day and I will completely do things. And if I need to take action towards it, I'll take action towards it. But I used to think that I needed to do something or it could only come to me in a certain way, or it would only happen in a certain way. And then Yahuwah showed me massively that that's none of my business, how it comes. He is the Aleph, uh, Aleph and he is the Tav. He, he will do all in between and it's nothing to do with me. I, I pray. And he gives us, you know, he, he give it to me. And whether that's circumstantial, healing, life changing things, whatever it be. But I, I had no control over the middle part anyway. <laughs> hey, that's why it all works. Because you, you surrendered what, you know, you can only do what your role is. You got to let him finish 
the work, you know, in you. So, you know, that's how it all comes to completion. Brother Rod, you had your hand? Yeah, I was I was listening to Brother Paul and, and I was I was concerned, not not with what he was saying. I was concerned with with what people might be hearing. But at the very end, he said, you know, he he was paying attention to the process and he stopped paying attention to the process, thinking it was going to be some certain way or it had to hurt, happen some some type of way. And, I, and I'm glad that he, he said that because that that brought me to what I wanted to say and that, you know, the experiences that we have, you know, sometimes they're for us, sometimes they're for other people, because there's going to be someone that's going to be dealing with that same type of situation. But there's no cookie cutter way that Yah deals with each and every individual person. So someone's experience might look completely different from someone else's. And there's levels to understanding and, and, and having faith. You know, that's why he tells us not to get weary, not to get worried, because why? We do. You know, whether whether we, you know, get to the point where we believe immediately after our prayer is a process. You know, sometimes there's a situation that we pray about and we walk away from it and it happens. The next, the next level of that might be a little bit more difficult to handle and we still worry a little bit, but he wants us to get to the point where we don't, like we see with the centurion, like we see with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, you know, and and we have to understand that process. And when we have an experience, we have to make sure that we speak of the outcome of that experience to help someone else and not that their experience is going to be exactly the same because it may not. And if it's not exactly the same, they're going to get disappointed and not understand and not trust on Yah's word based upon what you say. That's why we have to trust the word. The experiences help people because there are testimonies to the work of the Father in our specific lives. So we have to make sure we keep it there in those experiences because if 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 I'm telling you know Sister Robbie about something that I went through, um, and 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 she, and she's depending on what I'm telling her versus depending on the word or the word of Yah. She's depending on what I'm telling her happened in my experience. If hers is a little bit different and she doesn't understand the word, she's going to be let down. She may even lose faith because she's not understanding that it's Yah's work through my life. Yah is going to work through her life in the way that he needs to. And we, we need to make sure that people aren't depending on what we say happened, but what happened because Yah worked through us. And that's that's very distinctive. Um, and, and it's a responsibility that we have in, un, in understanding and helping people understand Yah's word and faith and trusting him, excuse me, and trusting him. So I just wanted to add that in. Um, but Paul, I like the way he ended, you know, in saying that each experience is different and that it's no cookie cutter way in which Yah does things. So um, just wanted to elaborate a little bit on that. That's good that you covered that back again. You know, it's important that we have a clear understanding going forward because it is, it doesn't really matter. The outcome is what matters, you know, how you get there. If you think about <laughs> Abraham, He's a prime example, you know, it's not easy to wait until you're 99 years old to have the promise fulfilled. We're thinking it's happening like 50 or 60 or some manageable time. Well, what are you going to do if it takes longer? You know, are you still going to allow that, that, that prayer that you sent out there to continue? Or are you going to start panicking or worrying or try to make it happen yourself like Abraham did? You know, we see that example for us so we gotta we gotta if we're gonna believe something we gotta believe it all the way all the way it doesn't matter when it happens even if it is at that last last hour you better believe you know and even if it carries on past that last hour that we think you know that he still got us one way or another so you know we got to get that kind of mindset in this walk that we're going to trust him no matter what you know whether you slay me you know i'm still going to trust you it really don't matter Go ahead, Marsha. Shalom. 
Shabbat Shalom. Yeah, we, you know, and as, as we talked about this, uh, I think back uh, when my daughter was going through uh, a lifestyle change and, you know, I, I knew that's not what the father had for her. That wasn't who I raised or any of that. And so while I did not, I mean, this thing was heavy. This lifestyle was heavy. And I did not know how he was going to do it. But as Sister Ina said, I decreed and I declared that it was going to be changed. The daughter I raised was coming back and I left that door open and my posture in prayer and my posture in faith, I walked that out. And it, it was two years, two, two and a half years before I seen the manifestation of the prayers, but I walked that thing out. And it is so critical when that our posture is right, you know, in order for us to lean on Matthew seven and eight, you know, ask and it shall be given, seek and you shall find. Our posture has to be right because if it is not right, we won't be able to hold on in those times when we don't see nothing happening. And then it also takes me uh, to Hebrews uh, 6, you know, the, the by faith, where there is many accounts by faith, by faith, by faith, that, that things happen, but it was only by faith. And then we spoke about on yesterday, which was beautiful, uh, when Sister Diane shared something, and I found the verse in Hebrews 6 and 15, it was uh 13 through 15, but 15 was really key. And we spoke about it that talked about after he patiently endured. And let me tell you, that was some enduring times for me. But I, I, you know, when I go through now, I can look back at that and say, Father, you brought me through that. So do it again, <laughs> do it again, you know, and hold on to it. Uh, and not let go and keep my posture of prayer and my posture of faith upright, upright. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Something that I think that's key here is that even what Brother Paul was talking about is we don't put him in a box. We're not trying to dictate how you do it, how it comes. We don't, we don't even want, you know, to, to dictate any area other than we got this need, Father. And, and you're the one that can solve that, 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 that problem. I don't know how you're gonna do it. I just know you will. I just know you can and you will, you know? And if we, if we maintain that posture, you know, sure, things are gonna come and they're gonna nudge you. You're gonna hit you. Are you sure you still believe this? Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you're at 99, you're like, hmm. I gotta make something happen. Maybe I misunderstood, or maybe I misread what what that meant. Uh, but no, stay steadfast. Don't get off course because that can happen very easy. But brother Rob, yeah, and 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 that's another important reason to to just just what you said. That's another important reason to to understand a word from Yah from somebody else because sometimes it's somebody else that helps us, you know take that mindset, like Sarah coming to Abraham saying, <laughs> he didn't mean me, babe. He meant, he meant my concubine, like just, just, just my, my servant, just, just do it with her, you know, and then it'll come true. Like, so, and Abraham's like, okay, you know what I mean? Like it's, you know, we have to make sure that we don't lose sight of what Yah said to us you know, and, and let someone else take you off of that because it's always going to be very subtle and very close to what y'all said, right? That's how the enemy works. Did he did he really say that or did he say this? You know, come on, use logic, man. Come on, is it going to happen like that? Is he going to drop it out the sky like that? Well, that's what he said. And, and, and now I got man on the ground. He said he was going to get feed us, you know? So we got to, we got to make sure that we know the distinction because it doesn't always just come from our own mind. Sometimes it's our desire to see that prayer answered and listening to someone else that is not tied into Yah the way that they need to be to give you that word. So that that's coming back to what we talked about earlier 
trusting a word from Yah from someone else as well and knowing the distinction when it is and when it isn't. We see a couple of examples and it was the wife or the, the woman that actually uh, throw that out there and the dude's like, okay. <laughs> you know, we still see it today. Okay, okay, honey. Are you sure? You'd be like, no, nah, ain't what you would have told me. I got to stand firm. Okay. You know, just, you know, it's that easy. You can be swayed, you know, by somebody that close to you. So you even got to, you got to be sure, you know, and you hold on to what you has told you, not what somebody else is telling you, you know, what told you. Brother Will, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Um, this subject about, you know, the whole Amuna, it's very interesting to listen to everybody's uh, perspective on, you know, where they're at on this uh, subject here. Um, for me, the word uh, boldness and petition or petitioning sticks out, um, especially after reading something that John states in 1 John 5. Um, right around verse 12, I, I just, because I'm a firm believer that, you know, when we petition or we speak and because of our amuna or asking or whatever the case may be, uh, brother Rod was bringing up, uh, something good that, you know, what, what may come through for us doesn't necessarily mean it's going to come through for somebody else in the same manner, uh, Paul brought it up to, you know, everyone's situation is a little different. And uh, in, in 1 John 5, I just, just want to re read real quick um, what, why I, I lean in this direction as well, uh, uh, according to something John says here. Um, I'll, I'll start off in verse 12. He says, he who possesses the son possesses life. He who does not possess the son of Elohim does not possess life. And then he's, he's writing a letter here. Uh, he says, I have written this to you who believe in the name of the son of Elohim so that you know that you possess everlasting life and so that you believe in the name of the son of Elohim. And then here it comes. <clears throat> and this in, bold, in boldness that we have in him, there's a certain level of boldness that we have in him, that if we ask whatever according to his desires or his will, he hears us, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, which we do, whatever we ask, we know that we have a petition, the petitions that we have asked of him. So this right here really talks to me a lot pertaining to the subject at hand um, that when we reach out, we're reaching out with a certain level of Muna uh, with our boldness and we are petitioning. And uh, another thing that sticks out here in verse 14, and it says, and this and boldness that we have in him that if we ask whatever according to his will or desire, he hears us. And then he takes it from there to do what he well pleases. And I just wanted to share that with everyone because that, that helps me out a lot. Sometimes I've had people ask me, well, you know, if your faith, if our faith is great, well, well how come he knows he's not coming through with a certain thing? And, you know, to me, it, it, it all evolves around his will doesn't mean that our faith is weak and that's why he didn't answer something. Um, it just means that to me, it means that it must be according to his desires or his wills, whether or not something's going to come through for us. I also see that as, you know, sometimes what we're asking for, sometimes he redirects us to something that's <laughs> even greater, you know, in his plan. He might allow us to walk in that that desire that we have an initial thought, you know, and, and he's okay with it. I, you know, this has happened to me recently, 
You know, I thought I was, you know, doing where I was, and I believe I was, but then there was a T in the road, you know, and I had to figure out, okay, you know, what direction do I go now, Father? I mean, you got me here, now where? You know, the directions come and you walk in that path and, you you know, you, you, you can't be stubborn and say, I'm going to continue to walk in this path when he told you you need to take that, that left at Albuquerque, if you will, you know, you, you know, all kinds of bombs and stuff can blow off if you get up in the wrong places. So uh, let's go ahead and continue on here with uh, the next phase of this, Brother JP, if you will. We're going to look at the Luke account, Luke 7, 1 through 10. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, this is this is Luke chapter 7, starting in verse 1. And it says, now when he had ended all his sayings, he and the audience, oh, I'm sorry, in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum, and a certain satyrian servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die. And when he heard of Yahusha, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews or the Yahudim, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And when they came to Yahusha, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this. For he loved, he loveth our nation, and he hath built us a synagogue. Then Yahusha went with them, and when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Master, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. Wherefore, neither that thought. I myself worthy to come unto you, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. For I also am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers. And I say unto one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Yahushua heard these things, he marveled at him, and turned him about, and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And they that were sent, returning to the house, found the servant whole that had been sick. Wow. <laughs> well, there's a little more detail. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, the whole, the whole case is just like, it kind of flipped on me right now. Because it just like, now, instead of it being the visual that I got from Matthew was that it was him um, <clears throat> presently there. But in this case, it was... It was a representation of him um, that went to Yahusha. And, and some of the, I'll, I'll just kind of mention some of the things that, you know, for one, in verse two, it says that it was, that this servant of the centurion was dear to him. And the second thing was um, in verse three, he heard of Yahusha and he sent unto him the elders or the Yahudim, beseeching him that, you know, he would come and, kill his servant and it says that in verse four when they came to Yahusha, they besought him instantly saying that he was worthy of for whom he should do this for he loves our nation and he had built us a synagogue so that was a interesting part that you know he was a, a man of like we had spoke about you know previously he was a man of um, other the other nations but he had this love for the for those people um, that he built a synagogue. That's kind of interesting, you know. That's that's something different, you know. And just um, it, it just added to the the whole part of history for me to show that you know he was somebody who who understood Yahusha. You heard about him. He knew, and um, and he loved his people as well. So hallelujah. Isn't it interesting? Here's a thought that comes to mind. You know, we just read the Matthew account all by itself. And we got a little gist, but even the thoughts that we had were kind of off when we started to put them into the equation with Luke. It changed our opinion, our thoughts on, on what we heard or what was being told, the story. You know, see what I'm saying? This is exactly the reason that is so crucial that when you are reading, studying scripture, that you just don't take the one account. You know, they could be missing some vital details, which we see here. You know, our whole two, our whole perspective changed about the centurion. It, he wasn't there. He, 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 you know, 
he had sent his friends to go tell him that he's not worthy to be there and to do all of this. So think about it in that sense. He had to think about, I don't even got to be there. I can just send my, my representatives and they can say, you don't have to come and be here either. You can do it. So he's doing a proxy through, <laughs> through all of these mediums and still got the answer prayer. Now tell me about that one. That's that's something really to ponder here because it wasn't even it wasn't even direct communication. But he still the 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 amuna that he walked in or that he was operating in was still astonishing to Yahusha because it was done even without his counsel or even being in front of him to ask him himself. That's amazing to me. You know, that is a, that's a whole nother level of, of understanding. <laughs> what it is that we're seeing here in this in this whole story and episode it that takes a a, a moon to another level that we've been talking about in my opinion you know that's like saying brother rod tell him that this is what i believe in and i don't even got to be here because i believe you can do it just tell him for me will you you know that's 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 a mind-boggling to me that that that, that there's still that much power and authority in our amuna when it's not even a direct request to the father ourselves and, and i mean think about that that's 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 pretty powerful i don't know your thoughts brother on that yeah i um i, I had read the luke passage well i knew the luke passage already that's why i said in the beginning when i first started talking that when we when we sit when he sends the messenger it's just like he himself going i mean we see that all throughout scripture even in the father and the son right um, but I think, uh, two things, one, um, the, the idea of, uh, of the synagogue, you know, had, had, uh, benefits to the Roman government as well, because the, you know, in the culture, the Roman, you know, government looked at the synagogue as the central morality of the Hebrews which would make their rule over them easier. So anything in regard to keeping their moral compass on point, they would help them do. Um, but there, but I think in, in the story in Luke, it expands our understanding because it shows the love he had for a servant as well, that he would go that far uh, for that servant um, to be healed and trust in the, in the word of Yahushua. Um, and you know, when we look at the whole picture um, and what was said and that they didn't veer from what the centurion told them to say just goes to the point of what we talked about earlier and the faith uh, that he had in regards to his direction that he gave them. So the instruction that he gave them. Oh, this is powerful when the more you meditate on this and you start to see the intricacies that that I didn't want to see, you know, those things. I, I've, I've never studied this way, so I've never really seen it this way, you know, as far as uh, breaking these and seeing the whole account and and seeing the difference, but so much more finer details that give us, like you said, the, the love that he had how for his, his servant that, man, that made him think. And it said that he had heard about Yahushua. So he really didn't know firsthand. He just had heard. So you start thinking about all of these little aspects that was enough to, to move Yahushua and stir him the way he did. You know, that, that's powerful. Brother JP? Yeah. And the more that I analyze this part of history, it says um, again in verse two, it says, and a certain centurion servant, okay, it tells him that he's sick. I'm sorry, verse three, and it says, and when he heard of Yahushua, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servants. So to me, it sounds like he sent the elders of the, of the Jews of the Yahudim to Yahushua. That's what it seems like. And I just want to kind of get this clarity if, if I'm seeing it right, to go and heal his servant. To, and, and so that was the first um, account of between Yahusha and the centurion was the it seems like it's the these Yahudim that came to him because then in verse six 
it says, then Yahushua went with them. And now he's walking with them. And then it says in, in verse six, and when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him. And now they come to Yahushua while he's walking towards the house. And they're saying, master, trouble not thyself for I'm now. And they're giving them now, now this other message, the message we had previously read in Matthew of don't you don't even have to come to my house so it seems like there was two encounters where Yahushua was going and the second encounter was the one that we read in Matthew of of this encounter saying you know I'm a man of, of this authority and and then that's when Yahushua said you know then it says when Yahushua heard these these things he marveled in verse nine and turned him about and said unto the people that followed him and and that sort of thing so let me know if that's what if that's what i'm seeing is is the same kind of picture that there was two encounters of people coming to yahusha and yahusha's traveling and so forth well rod gave you a thumbs up so he agrees with your assessment i give you a thumbs up so i agree with your assessment too i think we're right on track here you know we see you know very clearly some details that we hadn't seen before or paid attention. I surely can't say that I paid attention to them in this kind of detail to see. There's there's some powerful aspects to this story that we're that we're unfolding here, and we're starting to see how can we implement these in our own. You know, we see a, a an Amuna that 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 has passed through multiple people that still can achieve its purpose. So, you know. <laughs> How did you know? You almost have to think about okay. He 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 stopped him from coming to his house because he didn't feel worthy for him to come. So he told him, "Go tell him not to even come into the house because you don't need to come in here. Maybe the house is a mess, a wreck. Who knows what it was? But you know, he didn't want to have company. So he you know, but he believed from what he had heard, and he and he sent these Pharisees basically. Uh, you know, people they were they were there from the synagogue. They these were elders. Of, of these people right and i and that leads me to think or speculate i guess to think that you know probably what we're seeing here is that maybe there was something that happened in a synagogue where these other elders were located and they had heard or maybe told a story that, that he had heard about and that's how he had that connection and then when he believed and he was in this position or his servant was in this position he, he remembered what he heard and he he pleaded with them that they would go to Yahushua since they knew who he was, you know, to do it. And then when he did come, you know, then he met them and, and sent the friends out to meet them. And, you know, that's just, that this goes to a level of, of belief that we think somebody got to lay their hands on me before I can be healed. So here, you know, you don't need, he wasn't even asking or saying this directly to Yahushua. That's the powerful thing that gets me because he, he believed strong enough that he was ashamed of himself, but he believed that if he asked, that that same miracle could happen to his friend. And, and it happened right then and there. You know, that's the very same hour, Scripture says. So, you know, praise Yahuwah for answering prayers. Thank you. know, praise Yahuwah for examples that we have to follow that can help us understand our position, our walk today. How can we walk in the same authority that the centurion believed that Yahushua was walking in because we're, we're supposed to possess the same authority. You know, we're walking in, it's been handed to us. So us examining this and starting to see, I believe is going to start inspiring our beliefs as Brother, Brother Paul has said, he believes that enough that it's, it's a done deal. It really don't matter. Now that I, I petitioned you with all of my heart, mind and soul, I'm really focused on, I, I want you to affect change in, in this situation, in this person's life, whatever it might be. But you're passionate about this and you really do care. It's just not empty words. You know, you're, there's more than just words involved in these petitions. You know, you have a, a, a concern, you have a love for that person that you're enough to say, I'm going to go on behalf of this person and I'm going to petition for you and I would believe that I don't even, I don't have to even go to you to be healed. I believe that Yahushua just, he, he said, if I believe it, it's done. Therefore, I believe what the word says. And I believe that that can be done. So I'm going to stand here and make this declaration without wavering in doubt. And 
you don't see that thing happen like you thought. It's going to happen. It's somehow, some way, something will happen. You can believe it. Just may not be how you thought. All right, brother Charles, you got the final word today. Shabbat shalom, brother. Shabbat shalom. It just reminded me of um, how words travel. How the centurion heard about it. It was way over there and words travel. Just like when somebody be in jail, they can hear something and believe it. And then how you know about it? Because the word travel, and that's all I have. I just wanted to bring it to something that we can understand. That's all. Shabbat shalom. Praise Yah. I thought you was going to come up with some some new unique system that you were going to tell us how this thing worked because you know you're good for that brother you you break it down like how things travel and through the wires and you know the source of all of this stuff so I'm just joking with you man I love you brother you know it's good stuff hallelujah well praise you well you know another another wonderful study I appreciate everybody's input it's really been impactful this morning so May you continue to keep you and rock you and make his face shine upon you and give you his shalom. Shabbat shalom, everybody.